Malaysia's former Prime Minister Najib Razak has been sentenced to 12 years in jail after he was convicted of corruption. The verdict was delivered in the first trial linked to the 1MDB state investment fund scandal during his time in power. Najib was found guilty of all seven charges and fined close to 50 million US dollars. He continues to deny any wrongdoing and says he will appeal. This is the first case centered on the transfer of nearly $10 million from a unit of 1MDB into Najib's personal accounts. He's been convicted of abuse of power, three counts of criminal breach of trust and three counts of money laundering. Najib launched 1MDB as a state investment fund when he was prime minister in 2009. Okay, let's go across to Florence Louis, who's joining us live from Kuala Lumpur. Florence, just bring us up to date with what's been happening. Right, so we know that the judge has um, sentenced Najib Razak to a uh, prison, prison term as well as a fine of 210 million ringgit. Um, now, what we know is also that the defense lawyers are asking for an, a stay of execution of the sentence. So they're arguing that Najib Razak shouldn't go to prison immediately, that he should be allowed to stay um, outside of prison, be able to carry out his duties as a member of parliament until um, his appeal at the Court of Appeal has been heard. And this is a process that could take months, years even. And we don't yet know whether this, um, this um, argument by Najib's defense lawyers is going to be successful, whether the judge is going to grant a stay of execution of the sentence or not. But we do know that the prosecution has argued that granting a stay of <coughs> such, um, uh, granting a stay um, is really the exception rather than the general rule. Now, while you've been talking, Florence, I just want to sh show people a live pictures from outside the court there, which we're seeing at the moment. This is the, the press waiting because we understand that the, uh, the Prime Minister may well be uh, leaving from uh, there at the moment. Well, obviously, if he makes some sort of statement, we will be taking it. But at the moment, we're waiting to see what's, what's happening. Those negotiations that you're talking about continuing between his lawyers, which means that this is by no means over, is it? No, this is not over um, at all. I mean, you know, there's still an appeal process that Najib can take advantage of. He's been found guilty of all seven charges. Um, and, you know, he's been sentenced to 12 years in prison. The judge has said these, uh, t his, his, his jail sentences are to run con concurrently. Um, and the maximum of those sentences is 12 years in prison. But he still has an appeals process to the Court of Appeal. And even that, after that has been exhausted, if the verdict is not in his favor, he can still appeal to the highest court in the land, that's the federal court. So this is a process that could take years. And obviously, Najib and his lawyers want to ensure that if the, he can still take um, take advantage of the appeals process, then he doesn't want to be spending those years where he's appealing his verdict um, behind bars. There is a political ramification to this, isn't there? Because um, Najib's party is also a key part or has formed a key part of the coalition government um, in Malaysia. And therefore, one wonders how much responsibility or rather how much power and control uh, Najib Rajab is going to be able to carry on um, until such times as his sentencing does come in. Because as you say, there was an expectation or a hope, at least by his defence, that he would be allowed to carry on his parliamentary duties until that decision was finally made. Absolutely. Now, Najib is no longer the leader of the United Malays National Organization. That's UMNO. That's the biggest bloc in the ruling alliance. But he still has, um, he still enjoys very strong political support within the party and also outside of the party. We saw how high ranking party officials, including the president, were at court today to show their support for Najib Razak. Um, and this is a party that the current administration relies on to keep their really thin parliamentary majority. Now, um, there isn't yet a sense um, of, of how upset the uh, party is about this decision, whether or not it's going to um, put pressure on the ruling administration to go for snap elections. But on the other hand, now some analysts say that this conviction on Tuesday will provide a lot of credibility to the Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin's administration. And this is important because in the last several weeks, the last several months, we've seen um, people have expressed dismay and disappointment at how high profile corruption cases seem to have gone away. They've either been settled or the charges have been dropped. Now, one of those cases involves Najib's stepson. Another case involved um, a 
political ally of Najib Razak. So um, some analysts say the Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin may still be able to gain some sort of political mileage out of this conviction. That's Florence Louis bringing us up to date from Kuala Lumpur. We're going to be, of course, keeping across that situation outside the courtroom in uh, Kuala Lumpur, and we will be talking to Florence in the event that uh, there's something to report there. But for now, Florence, thank you very much indeed.